do with investment by Ghanaians are owning land in Ghanaian, or is it the power structure only the owner of the land, and the, the people are not owning land? What, what's, how can you buy land that nobody, somebody else already owns? Uh, could, can you explain your question well, so that I can Are you want to know if the Ghanaians, is the Ghanaians only in the uh, elite, or is it the uh, just the common Ghanaians that can own land? Who, who is the one that would really, uh, own the land? Like Anybody that? can own a land in the country. Nobody is bad from owning a land. Okay. Is that your question? Now, two people can say. You are the land is already here. Somebody else is right. You see, what is happening is that that's why I, I said initially that if you want to buy a land, you have to make a research. Because if you make a research, it will give you the history of the land. As I said, there's no land anywhere which doesn't belong to anybody. Like in Ghana, lands were owned through wars. So when they conquer a place, they own it, then the chiefs, then it will descend to the families, it will descend to the individuals. And then eventually the government too, by act of parliament or by executive instrument, can also acquire a land. So when you are going to buy a land and you don't make a search, you go and buy the land from a wrongful person. Eventually somebody can also go to appropriate person and go and buy the land. So eventually you come to realize that the land you own, somebody is also claiming that land and you have to go to the court. So it is the court who determines who owns the land by going into the case and then determine that this land is owned by so so and so. And eventually, whether you have registered your name on it or not, it becomes a new Thank you very much. Great. All right, next question. I have I satisfied you, please? The, the kind of to the point of how is it the Ghanaians already here are not appealed to to buy the land when most of us are outsiders? It's just like if, 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 you can, if I wanted to buy your house, or you have land. We have land in uh, Arizona. If someone wants to buy land and we have it for sale, we can sell it. You see? Even though it's, the land might here be owned by Ghanaians, they, if they want to sell their land, they can sell their land to you. The same as the states. It's really kind of the same system. It's just the, and the same thing happens in the states where people encroach on your land. Like in California, if somebody's on your land for seven years, it's their land. Squatters, squatters, thank you. Yeah. Right. Same so, thing. Right, so in essence, we have challenges here. You know, the, the land department is trying to clean up their act now, my brother. They understand that there's some, uh, for instance, chiefs uh, are known to sell land, some of the, some of the chiefs are known to sell land um, here and there, okay? And then there's, there's a problem. So the Paramount Chiefs have to come in, like in the place where I own ocean property in the central region, uh, the, one of the chiefs uh, was sanctioned by the big chief, and that happens sometimes. Sometimes the Paramount Chief will sit down with the little chief and say, you made a mistake in selling this land, uh, and you caused some problem uh, in my jurisdiction. So that's what happened, you know. They do it because, to be honest with you, I felt that uh, they've been getting away with it up until now. So now the hammer is falling on a lot of these crooks. So we've begun the last department in, in, in many places in Africa, they're beginning to straighten it out. Okay. Next question. Yes, my brother. Yes, they just went from um, Florida. Um, concerning the land issue, um, so just like, just like the brother said, um, basically doing the research on the land first yeah. would be the best way to go about it. So even if you're in a region in Ghana that, that's that the chief that's in charge of that area, even if you go through the chief first, right. it's still required for you to do that yes. research on that land right. before purchasing that land from the chief. Right. Right? Right. Yeah. Right. You see, also, what we do as a consultancy, we tell people that when you come through us, we give a money back guarantee. So you got to look for people that are willing to put their neck on the line, so to say, for you. So part, the next part to that question is mm -hmm. also, you have to be a Ghanaian citizen to purchase land? Absolutely not. As our brother said earlier, all you have to do is just um, come get someone that you that, that you trust, a consultant to guide you. The law of Ghana says that you can own, none of the can own land in Ghana. That's why they have the Ghana Investment Promotion Center here. 
you can not only own land, but you can uh, own uh, hotels. You know, you can start any kind of business, as you know, that and tell owning land. So you can own land. The law says 50 years for another Ghanaian, and then 99 year leases for Ghanaian. So it's not owning. Right? It's not, that's leasing. Right, leasing. It's just like in the Bible. They have the 50 year jubilee in the Bible, where it says when you close to the jubilee, the land price goes down. So it's based on the biblical principle of 50 years. So based on that leasing option, as a nonsense, would get that lease. Uh, to be honest with you, we, we got a citizenship committee set up now. The Ghana government has granted citizenship to certain individuals, and we have a committee working on that. So that is you have another ball part all together with that. So some good things is happening. You can see me later, and I can fill you in on that. But the answer is no. <laughs> no, you don't have, it doesn't fast track you to get land to get um, right, right. But I know it doesn't fast track you to get citizenship. <laughs> right, but it does fast track you to, to fulfill the requirement as being an investor. Yeah. Okay, next question. Yes, my lady. I'm Ron from California. Mm -hmm. okay. Piggybacking on his question with regards to citizenship, mm -hmm. how challenging is obtaining citizenship in Ghana? And if you are a land or property and you do not obtain citizenship, and you meet your demise, what happens to your property? Well, you would need a lawyer to have, uh, first of all, you need to make out a will, okay? You make out a will, and they have a, a court system here. They read the will. Uh, we have lawyers that, uh, Africa for the Africans and Opportunities in Africa, uh, made available for your legal advice. We have two lawyers that work, they usually be here, uh, but lawyers are very, uh, they're in demand because of so many uh, things that goes on here. So you get a will, and then you make the will out, and then the will is a legal document, okay? And they, it's, it's recognized all over the world once you do it right, especially here in Ghana. They, they, they have the rule of law in Ghana. This is not an outlaw type place. This is a place where they really follow the rule of law. So if you have your will, it will be... If your product, your, your, your property will go to those destinies. Now, how challenging is obtaining citizenship? Um, citizenship has been a challenge because Africa has just got out of, when I first came to Africa, everything was under what you call uh, uh, a dictatorship, okay? You had, you had military states here back in the 80s when I came. So in the 80s, uh, I was in Liberia for four and a half years and was ruled by a dictator by the name of Doe. Okay, when I came to Ghana, Ghana was ruled by a military ruler by the name of Gary John Rollins. And then in the early 90s, they went over to democracy. So during that process, they was ruling, in the beginning, it was ruling by decree. And then they went into democracy, and it was a challenge because you got different tribes in Ghana here, and they had to, you know, circle the wagon because they was then, you know, they just came out of colonization. And then neo-colonization was in there, so they had to protect their home front, plus they had to stabilize everything. So now things are getting stabilized, and now we begin to get the citizenship. And we've got it last year under the, uh, under the, the, uh, the previous government that just went out. We was given uh, citizenship. 33 of the diaspora here was given citizenship. So we're looking at um, the track record of a country like Ghana. Let's give Ghana a round of applause for a deep going like that. No, okay, well, that's, that's my sister White here. And then we'll get my brother back. Go ahead, sister. Uh, is there a year limit on um, the option that the lessor will give to the, the leasee on, on a property? Like, is there a time limit on that? Like, is there, before the, before the option comes up again? Well, it depends upon uh, the particular that I'm talking. Maybe like you take like a particular uh, area like La, La Badi, all this area, it falls within the La people. So they may have their term, which will be maybe 90 years. Another director or Lesa will also have 75 years. Somebody can have 45 years. So it depends upon the person who is the Aludia owner. When I say Aludia owner, it means somebody who owns a very big tract of land. Such a person, is, it means he is the owner of the land within the limitation. So, so if he wants to give you a lease, 
he will determine that as of my life, I'll give it to you for 40 years. And then you can renew it for maybe 30 years. So it depends upon the individual who will allow it. There's no fixed term. But no cap on it. So they could really potentially do it for 100 years, right? Yes, the because you can renew it any time that it expires. Once you are living on it, you will be paying rent to the lessor. And then if they did it for 100 years, could that lease be assumable by their kids? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. As far as you pay the rent, because they are not giving it to you outright. When they give you outright, it's free old. You don't have anything to do with the owner of the land. But when it's a lease, it means that annually, as far as you remain on the land, you are going to pay a ground rent. But it's, but it's 50 yeah. years, no, sister, it's 50 years, and then you renew after that. That's okay. as a non-demand. Yes. And, and then you, with the option to renew. Right. Regardless of what the, the lease wants to do. Uh -huh. so non non demands is 50 years, oh. all is 99 years. Okay. Right. Yes, my brother, back. Right. I just left Liberia two weeks ago. The Constitution of Liberia said that if you're not a black person, you cannot own land. You cannot lease land. So in essence, um, in Ghana here, you can get a lease for 100 years. I got a lease for 99 years. Who's your mayor? <coughs> the second, the second, no, first of all, they don't even differentiate. When the Ghanaians tell you if you're black, you can get a 99 years. Because first of all, you never give up the Ghanaian citizenship to states. That was stolen. But if you're black, you say, hey. I'm still a good man. So please, we have to be careful. Technicality, the land is yours. Because who's going to be around 50 years or 99 years to challenge you anyway? Who's going to be around to say, you know, give it back? So please, let's be clear. Africa's ours in the first place. This is just formality to say, you know, we, we're back and here's some documents to keep the wolves away. But land is ours. The reason why the big sword comes in is that any community, if he owns a land, it doesn't belong to an individual. It, it belongs to the children of today and the future people. So that when it's leasing you, the future people to who will come, they will still benefit from the ground rent. That doesn't mean that you don't own the land. You own the land and the building of the land. Only you are going to pay rent as far as you remain on the land. Yes. It's, it's like taxes. It's like paying yes. taxes. Yes. The, taxes. Yes. The, taxes. Yes. the taxes are not so expensive. For my 50 acre land, my, my, taxes, my lease is less than $500 a year. Okay? It's not, it's not high like that. You see? So in essence, Africa is still humane. This is not the place where the vampires suck you, you know, 
So please, we'll take one more question we close out. Yes, brother. Yes, uh, greetings, uh, panel. Uh, since we were talking about the citizenship uh, mm -hmm. earlier, yeah. can you speak on residency? Yeah, residency, of course, you can get it um, two ways. One, through the Government Investment Promotion Center. You meet the requirement, and then uh, they will give you the details. Or if you're here, um, you want to, if you have like a retirement, you know, you can also go in under the retirement. If you're, if you're reaching a retirement age, you can go and talk to them, and they can give you residency based on retirement. Or you can get residency by base by marrying a Ghanaian. Okay? Now you can marry a Ghanaian. Now you can also it's recognized legally. You can marry a Ghanaian, you know, and then they say two years you get residence from it after you marry a Ghanaian for two years. They won't get married for two years because they also understand that you can get married for residency purpose, you know, just for just marriage. Like even in America, they get the green card by marriage to marriage from all over the world. So in essence, no, that's another way to do it. You marry and then you get you get the uh, residence permit, but you have to wait two years. Okay, with that, we'd like to thank everybody for coming. We're going to close out the topic. I'm sorry to leave. The only place uh, start off and then give time to create up. Seeing as through all this.